Alright, hello and welcome to the sixth episode of the Pokemon Speedruns podcast. We're that far into it that I don't know how to count this far. I'm Amoeba. Joining me are the two usual Brits, Goa Goga. Hi. And Crafted. Hello. And returning, first man to make his appearance in two podcasts, not quite back to back, we have Ty Kevin. Hello. Hello. How are we all? I'm doing great. Good. Uh, yeah. So, for anybody that caught the last podcast, that was uh, the the month of world records. We had so many, so many things to talk about. Now everybody's gone back to school. All the young lads have uh, returned back to education and whatnot. So this is a quieter month, which has its ups and downs. There's not as much to talk about, but we can go into more detail, which is nice. So I think we'll start off not at all biased. We'll start off with Mr. Crafted's Platinum Glitchless World Record run. And as is tradition, I've highlighted the worst point in the run. Yep. So, um, pretty much this run was, like, really good. It was um amazing start, you know, good. Um, everything was, like, really clean. There was, like, uh, one spinner. Uh, so I'm talking about, like, before all of the bad stuff. There was one spinner, which was like the best spinner to hit because you have to like dodge her loads of times and she only has one poke. So it's like not too big of a deal. And then so that was all good up to the Volkner split. And then um, I hit the spinner in Volkner's gym, which isn't too bad. I hit the the best one to hit, the one with one poke rather than the four Pikachus. Was it, is that so the that one you have to pass like three times? Yeah, you have to pass him like three times and he has only one poke, so it's like, it's not too, it's not the worst. But then on Volkner, um, I, so I use the max ether like on, on the Electrovar to, so that he hits me into Torrent. That's the, the kind of idea. Um, I actually realized recently I should use the max elixir there. Um, <laughs> And then use the max ether later, but that's just like a minor thing I realized yesterday. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, he's supposed to hit me into torrent, but unfortunately he paralyzed. So then he was obviously going to outspeed, so I had to heal, and then I couldn't get torrent. And you can't really see it from my splits; like it doesn't look like I lose much time because the same thing happened in my previous PV. <laughs> You can I got a paralyzer. You can tell from the possible time save because you had a minute twenty-five to save. Yeah. I think you saved about fifteen seconds. Yeah. yeah. So in my PB, I didn't hit the spinner, but I did get paralyzed, and I didn't have a full restore, so I had to die and revive. Damn. And then, so after that, I didn't have torrent for victory road, which I think loses about thirty seconds. I think roughly. And then on the Elite Four, I missed the 15 and 16 Vespiquen range, which it, and then it used Defend Order, so I had to. So that wasted a bit of time as well. And the thing about that is that's not a range if you get Torrent, because if you get Torrent, you get another candy and remove that range. So it all stemmed from not getting Torrent there. Christ. All the bad stuff. Ch cherry berry strats when? <laughs> no, I need those choice specs. But, uh, I'm just. <laughs> this run was so good. <laughs> like, it's still really, really good, but it's such a shame that Volkner decided to, like, just go, yeah, have this yeah. bit of time save. It's probably two minutes lost after Giratina in total. Christ. And before Giratina, it's like. Not not that much, like a minute, yeah. <laughs> maybe. And you got the what was it the the trip? No, not triple extended minute. That's Gen One. Whatever the uh, extended <laughs> minute is here. Yeah, so I got it up to Heart Home, which is like the furthest I've got it. I've I've rooted it like a bit further than that, but you know it's hard to do perfect movement for you know a long time so i'm happy getting it up to there 
Like I'm happy as long as I get it up to a turner, to be honest. What's the what's the theoretical limit then for extending the minute? Or is it potentially well, the entire run? Potentially the entire run. It just gets hard when you have to do biking and um also Malian's gym. That would be really hard to do perfectly. Yeah. Uh but where did I root up to? I rooted up to just after Heart Home. There's a spinner that I did, and then after that, the biking is quite hard to do, like the exact same every time. That spinner that was just before Commander Mars was that one that you're in minute four, so you could just walk past. Yeah, yeah. So ev everything at this point is minute, um, all the way to Heart Home all the spinners and everything. I found out the other day as well from watching your round two attempts that uh, apparently that, is it Fantina's gym? It's just completely random if you don't manip it. Yeah, so you don't have to extend the manip all the way there to know which doors you have to go through. It's just based on your initial seed, which is obviously like, if you don't save and reset, that will always be the same. Um, so that determines which doors you have to go through. But because I died to Gardenia, I didn't know which doors I had to go to. Uh, this is on the round two run. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lost loads of time trying to find out because <laughs> you have to search for like the thing on the floor. God. But uh, if you do extend the minip all the way to the gym, you can minip like the trainer movements which I didn't get in this run, so they were just random. The the trainer movements. So I was just there's like two trainers that can potentially hit you. See that that one <laughs> right next to the door that I was going through. I was I wasted it a bit there for her. Oh, I'd say congrats on uh, congrats on that record. Are you look? Do you reckon you're going to improve that? With the current route, or are you going to wait for um, more route improvements, or look for more well, at some point? Uh, I would like to improve it, mainly because of like the massive time loss at the end. But there's like so many other categories that I want to do more than this one, <laughs> so it probably won't be for a while if I do go back to it. Yeah, we, uh, we should mention as well your your round two. Recent PB five oh eight question mark five oh six. Oh, was the the one before got... it was five oh eight? Yeah, Am I just making that up. Oh, cool. Yeah, five oh eight and then five oh six. That's a weird category as well. Yeah, it's um, it's very interesting uh, the routing for that category because you have to see all of the Sido Pokemon, so you have to either fight extra trainers. Or there's also a really cool chain minute that you do uh, after round one where you minute like 10 encounters in a row. And in my run, in my PB, uh, he messed up the minute like probably two thirds of the way through. So I had to get the last few encounters randomly. And I got the last three encounters like all uh, first try. Like I just got. <laughs> all three of them randomly even though I didn't have the minute nice so yeah that's pretty big things for platinum at the moment I don't think diamond or pearls had much love this uh, this month but crafted putting in the work on platinum uh, I'm interested to see if worst will come back at any point for that because it's been two years since his 344 yeah that that 344, that was actually the oldest main series record. And um, nah. it was just a, a, a really solid run um, that he got back like in 2016. It was not not easy to beat because, uh, I mean, it had quite a bad start, but then the middle and the end was like really, really solid. I'm amazed that that's the old, well, that was the oldest one. Because I remember for the longest time it was, um, was it Black One? Um, I can't remember his name, Vulligen. Yeah. That was that was, the, <laughs> that was like the. Oh, that would be an old one. Did you hear he's stepping down from uh, part of the GDQ staff? 
I did not know that. He is. Bulligen's cool guy. Runs Ori in the thingy forest. I can't remember the word in the middle of it. Ori in the blind forest. Blind. Thank you. <laughs> Ironic that it's blind and I forgot the word. <laughs> Christ. Yeah, shouts to Vulligen. Shouts to that SDA thread where I think they were all discussing that Snivy was evidently the best starter for Black. Yeah. We've gone on a tangent here. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at another world record. I'd oh, say it's the big I one. Should, oh, go on. I should quickly mention the next uh, oldest record is Emerald Any Percent. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I was getting a Starfire. Uh... <laughs> God, that's I'm amazed that it's emerald anything. Never mind. But the, the the glitchless record must be a little bit old for that now. It's really pushing two years. It's got a great one. I love speedrun.com. For some reason the Pokemon page just freezes. <laughs> Everything else works brilliantly. But... White screen of the death. <laughs> the glitchless record is still there because Shiru hasn't done yeah, true. more runs this month. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> on Shiru. <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't the, worry, streaming Doki Doki. The, gl the glitchless record's from February 2017. That's pushing two years now. Not quite the, the any percent, which is July 2016. My god. You think Sapphire's older? I suppose the Sapphire, I think, is older than the glitchless for Emerald. Yeah, it's October yeah. 2016. Yeah. That's... It is, yeah. Although it was only submitted in January, so it's showing up as one year. Oh yeah, he didn't submit it for ages. He, well, I think he expected to beat... Yeah, it says placeholder run still. Yeah. He expected to beat it at some point, and then the frustration killed him. And then he realised that Sapphire is a bad speed game. Hi, Araya. I see you there in Araya. fourth. So yeah, we were... We're going to look at another world record. I'd say that the... the the other big news of the month. Pokey Goy. Pokey Lad. Gets himself a 145. Uh, basically jumps straight to the Agatha fight because YOLO Agatha. Ty Kevin will be able to run us through this quite well. What's YOLO Agatha, Ty Kevin? You, what is YOLO Agatha? Yeah. Well, it's where you don't heal before Agatha. So... The uh, exactly what happened there. You're praying for Gengar to not use one of his moves that could kill you instantly. Um, usually, what you do if you're not YOLOing is you will heal in anticipation of Lance before Agatha. So you hope to take a little bit of damage for Agatha on Agatha, so that when you get hit by Lance's Gyarados's Hydro Pump then you will be in red bar again. Um, it's kind of a uh, best way to trade off speed and safety. But if you're going for pure speed and throwing caution to the wind, you can just avoid healing even for Agatha. And then either... I, I'm not sure... Will will he heal for... I think he still has to heal for Lance then. I don't think he'd, I don't think he'd risk... I think that'd be a bigger talking point if he also yeah, be... risked Hydro Miss. Yeah, so you still end up having to heal for Lance, but you don't lose the red bar for Agatha. Yeah, oh, he's supers. Oh, double super, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because it's that a... puts you, like, at literally you need to get 1 in 39 to die or something like that. Yeah. So the, the YOLO Agatha was also because of he only had two supers left. So he, if he did get hit by Agatha, he still couldn't heal up to this health anyway for Lance, I guess. I suppose his only other option is full restore, but that's slow. Yeah, I'm sort of if surmising you're full here. Restore, I'm not sure. Then you're not going to get your red bar because it would be because he have like what, 178 health at this point. Yeah, I think 171. So he, he'd be at 50 at, or 171. So he'd be at 43, and that wouldn't be enough for red bar. If he even if he took the max amount of hydro pump damage. Damn. So you really want to. Avoid using a full restore if you're at a top time. Getting some hot off the presses info from the chat that he also X speeded instead of X specialed to not give the second Gengar a turn. Yeah, because it would just be too risky to give both of the Gengars a turn. I'm guessing you 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 risk a bit of a range there though if you don't have the special. I'm boost. guessing that means a special range on Golbat, but Golbat is very safe. <laughs> 
compared to their Gengars. Haze, though. Haze. What a good move. <laughs> now, this run is a bit all over the place. It was... It's like amazing apart from two spots where it's terrible. <laughs> and that's not me having a dig. But his uh, his Koga split, god this is going to be difficult to find as well. Here we go. This is towards the end of the Koga split. He uh, loses nearly a minute. A combination of... He got really high red bar from Sylph rival and basically leveled out of it immediately. Then spent four turns on Giovanni's Rhydon, trying to get hit back into red bar. And then he loses another turn here on the Weezing, because it doesn't self-destruct turn one. Yeah. Wonderful bit of Gen 1 AI where it feels like it needs to ex-attack before it self-destructs with that 15 health. <laughs> Brilliant game. And similarly, he lost, he lost another minute in the fly split. Uh, oh god, what did he lose this to? Oh, Autumn Thrashka. He, he must not have had Mega Punches left to do Mega Punch into, into Thrash. Uh, guess not. Let's take a look. Oh, that's the Pokemon. It, it, said, it said he got three turn Thrash and then got put to sleep. Which yeah. would imply that he did not Mega Punch the first turn. Unless he just didn't do Mega Punch straps. I'm joking. <laughs> Yeah, this is... Cause when I was listening to this run uh, the other day, he says in uh, in the middle of this fight, he's just like, ah, this is a dead run. <laughs> this, is, this is over. So, it's over. Uh, it's over. Go home. Why are you still here? Yeah, he went Classic straight for the thrash. You are. Classic world record quote. <laughs> this run sucks. <laughs> If the run is bad, it will be beaten soon. I remember, like, in the in Europe, this run was happening at, like, 3 in the morning. And I f I'd, like, fallen asleep watching Pokeguy's stream. And I woke up in, like, the middle of this run. I think it was, like, just after he'd beaten Misty. I saw the gold split and it's like, oh, th that seems pretty cool. And just went back to sleep and woke up and found out that it world recorded. <laughs> So he went for full restore instead of, or he must be low on potions too, right? God, he's getting bodied. <laughs> he still gets two more turns of hitting himself in confusion after the full restore. So this is interesting though, because at 21, he would have been extremely dangerous trying to get red bar off of one of the slow pokes. He'd be hitting himself pretty low, probably. But the, the situation he put himself in here by getting unlucky and having to full restore, he then could have much more versatility in how he chose to get red bar in Rock Tunnel. I think he, he gets hit by both the Cubone and the Slowpoke, if I remember rightly. And he then probably he's... tries to get hit by Cubone twice. He, no, he only takes one hit off Cubone, takes one off the Slowpoke, and then he's in really high red bar, and then he misses the Bulbasaur range and gets Vine Whip. But that was a little bit, a little stroke of luck for him. Interesting. Actually, I don't think that is red. Oh no, he gets hit by the slowpoke twice, sorry. Yeah, I thought he would have had to get hit by something twice. Yeah, that's my bad. So yeah, 19 is red bar, but he, I think he levels out of it in a couple of levels. But the, the vine whip yeah. from the Bulbasaur keeps him in it. That would make sense. So it it's it looks slow, but in, in the end, the way he played it, he ended up not losing that much time. He would have basically had to have a perfect fly split to do better than this. Because he still ended up getting red bar back. He says he's happy with his execution. Uh, but it's a very bizarre run. The big question now is when is 144 and who's going to do it? No, it's definitely gonna... possible from this sort of run, but you can see also that his early game was extremely difficult to beat. I I can't imagine that very often you get a 43-33 surge. It's the gold splits all over this run as well. You get to the like there's three there in the early game, and you get to the end and it's just yeah. like gold, 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 gold. <laughs> yeah. The 1717 Brock's or it's not Brock, it's the moon entrance split is 
pretty crazy. And then the other ones are basically just that makes sense for how how fast the run is up to that point. And then Surge is he gains forty seconds again, and it's like okay, that's I don't think you can get much faster than a forty three Surge. That's not something people play for very often. Well, he's like what is he after Surge? A minute and a half ahead of world record. I actually didn't yeah. realize quite how nuts that is. I thought those were his PB splits. Yeah, like. Uh, 36, like a high 36 is still a very good run, world record pace run. And he has a low 36, bordering on a 35 at Misty. Bloody. So, so we've had one red world record. We will throw up red world record number two. Crazy Dan got himself the glitchless classic rule set record which for anybody that doesn't know the difference classic is uh basically the japanese rule set can't hard reset which removes the ability to rng minute and you can't use okie doll skip uh is there anything else or those yes are uh, you cannot hard reset the console and you cannot use polka doll. So what you end up having happen is you get experience from killing the Marowak and you get experience from all of the rocket hideout underground. And you can't use instant text. So you end up actually getting to play a lot safer because you don't have to worry about never healing because you'll lose instant text using your menus. Thank you, Araya. Yes, thank you. So this is as it's still a very quiet category um results it's actually a, a fairly new one in a way uh resulted as a merge of the japanese and english leaderboards so uh two extra categories were created which were english rule set on the japanese language and this category which is japanese rule set on the english language so this has been probably far more highly contested on the actual Japanese language runs because it's the Japanese staple. But uh, people starting to show this more interest. There was, I don't think the last run was too too long ago. The last record, sorry. It's oh, it's pretty flavorful that they did the sepia tone palette for the classic <laughs> category. <laughs> Crazy Dan, he's the uh, big big runner for catch them all, isn't he? Yeah, second place there. And I think he ran Prism in one of the... Am I making this up? Prism in one of the marathons? Yeah, he did. Okay, I'm not nuts, cool. And he got a 148 in Glitchless recently as well. Oh, really? Big lad. And he was in the races that I'm going to talk about. Oh, yeah. In fact, that's probably a good segue. There's no point doing the... We'll come back to the bit that was next in okay. our... Uh... In our list, in our script, <laughs> but we'll talk about the uh, scripted Pokemon red anniversary race. Yes, our man on the ground, Ty Kevin, with his comfy second place there. Man on the ground. Yeah, this was the second race we did actually. So we we had uh, what was this? It it was the twentieth anniversary of the North American release of Pokemon Red and Blue uh, a week ago today. And so that weekend, we did two races of Red Glitchless, one on Sunday and one on Saturday, both at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And they were hugely attended. 13 came out for the first one and 17 came out for the second one. There were 20 unique people across both days. It was pretty big. Uh, yes, yeah, so I did. It was, this is the first one here. We had 10 finishers. Uh, and shall we pull up the nice graphs? Yes, little, that'd be awesome. If little... We could pull up that graph too. Shout outs to Jim Jim B one six two, I believe, organized these races. Yes, in the first place, and then made these nice graphs. Jim Jim B is a pretty big organizer in the race community. He's pretty cool. So what what basically happened in this first race is you can kind of see that everything in these races tends to even out by the Koga split. And the Erica split because the, you you have all of your RNG in the flute and fly splits, 
just finishing up. Uh, we, we saw this in the world record from Poke Guy that Flute Split was one of his big time losses. Or not Flute Split, but Fly Split. So um, you can see that segment here in the graph where early on everything's all over the place. And then by the Fly and Flute Splits, people have kind of, uh, you could say, gotten into the rhythm and gotten pretty close to where things end up. Um, you can see that Dare Tepic is very far. He jumps far up the pack at Route 3 and then basically keeps near the top for the whole thing. Now, interestingly, Dare Tepic is the only person to have forfeited in the second race, which uh, happened. And, and so there were 16 out of 17 finishers in the second race. And this one also really shows the insanity of the first few splits. And then the evening out by the the Kogan and Erica splits. What the hell is actually happening? <laughs> so whoever was first place in the Nidoran split dropped to 12th. Bobel. Damn. <laughs> Bobel. <laughs> yeah, so this one, uh, I started out pretty far towards the bottom, right? Uh, I Yes, yeah, so I'm the guy who started in 11th, I think. Or was it no thirteenth? That was the orange. Thirteenth, yeah. Yeah. So I had a horrible uh, Squirtle in both runs and got growl trolled by the rival. So I I was starting out both runs at like a three minute uh, Oak House exit, and then uh, I messed up the manip the the Nino manip both races, <laughs> but I hit the Moon manip, and you can see the hitting the like a good route three and hitting the moon minip i was all the way up to third and then i was pretty stable in the middle of the top five through the end Hamish, and then hamisho was real dominant yeah he, he took that first place on route three and ran with it if i say that consistency <laughs> yeah this is this is split consistency hammer had like a one five one he was two minutes ahead of anybody else finishing Damn. so that was really good play by him um and then the next thing to mention was uh me and i believe it was F flutz we yeah we were four seconds apart in second and third and then fourth and fifth which was was the green araya and on were one second apart wow so this was a hotly contested anniversary race with 17 people <laughs> Or Hwanli with that graph who dips behind at the champion and then loses it by a second. Yeah. At least he didn't lose it to mashing between champion and hall of fame. True. <laughs> that would have been... Can you imagine how fast those two were probably mashing to try to overtake each other? <laughs> yeah, you, you can... That actually happens here in one of the... Uh, Stefan and Chill Magic swapped on timing on the hall of fame split. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> god. <laughs> right, you cheated. That's that's a bold claim. <laughs> I want to know how he says. You need to mash faster, Steph. It prove the button. He was four seconds ahead. <laughs> well, the 16, 16 people finishing a race is amazing in the first place. Yes. Oh, and another fun statistic. I asked both days, and nobody on either day said that they accidentally hit an optional. And I say accidentally because I believe Weed intentionally fought the gentleman on the day two race. So there <laughs> there was an optional fought, but nobody accidentally hit an optional. The job you know, So that is some top tier racing execution. I was I was quite satisfied nice i like uh, i like the big races they're always mm -hmm. interesting and uh, their tepic also had the uh, 15103 fastest time out of either race which is a really good race time for pokemon red did i have no idea how you what's that did anybody else pb there because i know you said you pb'd was yes, that a race I, don't, I don't know if i mentioned that yet but i did pb with that time because i don't i don't have many non-race runs um, I don't know if anybody else PB'd, but it's definitely possible because so many people were running. 
beginning of the graph describes Pokemon speedrunning. <laughs> I think uh, one of the ones to point out is the people that are dropping off towards the end. Unless this was signi you know, a significant point of looking at, this is you need to put in your late game practice. I'm calling you out a little bit. But who who drops Well, a lot? you can die to Lance. There, yeah, there yeah, was yeah. Syndicate. Like, I, I think. think Chill Magic looks like he he drops three or four places. To oh land, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think. I'm just gonna excuse me one second. Slash timeout war tab one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is. I didn't say that's funny. <laughs> You're spreading heresy. No oh, heresy. Pokemon speedrunning is a good yeah. thing. <laughs> yep. So we all got those SRL points too. That was pretty, pretty oh, solid. Has, any, has anybody bopped Montbank yet? Highly unlikely, but <laughs> pretty really good stuff for SRL points. Anybody ever will. Uh, also, Steph, it says he got a race PB, even though he died to Lance. Wow, damn. That's got a sting, actually. Right. We'll go back to that one that we skipped over. It made more sense to do these ones together. Now we've got... This is a brand new video from I'll be honest I don't actually recognize this guy's name he's only ever released two videos but it's a channel called Speed Docs and if you remember from PS Podcast I want to say three could be wrong there was a snap any percent world record progression video mm -hmm. well, I've actually you... met CC Neverender at the uh, GDQ events I've been to so I'm pretty familiar with his work oh yeah there was a lot of effort he put into that video. I was really impressed by it. Like the production mm -hmm. value was very good, um, and it clearly showed like how much he cared for the uh, runs. Mm -hmm. Oh, got it had all the history of the uh, lots of research going into it. Very good stuff. But this this actually looks it's using the same banners as the as CC Neverender. So I'm wondering if this is like an alternative account or. Thing. It looks like it's got the same kind of production style. But yeah, 100% world record progression video. I say I learn a lot about Snap as a speedrun, not knowing anything at all about the run. I've never even played the game casually. The any percent record progression video was really Whoa, good. whoa, whoa. Did I you just say you've never played Snap casually? I haven't. I, I didn't. I never owned a 64 when I was younger. It's, Isn't it, it was, on the Wii Virtual Console? It might be. I'm pretty sure it is. Have also not played Snap. You're, you're like 11, so that's fine. Okay, <laughs> add four, and then you're correct. But <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna repeat the same disgusting fact that we repeat every podcast at this point. But you were like four months old when Coliseum came out. <laughs> it's super upsetting. God. Yeah, Snap is a, it's, considering it's an, basically an on-rails shooter, it's a very involved speedrun. Yes, I, I have said before that it is the best on-rails shooter of all time. <laughs> That's that guy that just got a record by 0.3 of a second as well. Yeah, uh, I'll throw a, a link to this video in the YouTube description. I definitely recommend checking it out. Might as well throw it in the chat as well, in case anybody wants to have a look at it now. But just open it in another tab, please. I need sweet Twitch books. Thanks. Going from one 64 game to another. Pokemon Stadium got a lot of love. That's good. This is the current third place run by Silent Wolf. Uh, actually, a bit of a sad run for him in a way. Um, I've done, I've done my classic. I've highlighted the worst part of the run. I'm great. Sorry. He, so you can see from his splits, he's three, three and a half, four minutes ahead at this point, uh, and he's just died to a crit from Thoros on the very final fight. Which means he has to completely redo it. 
Um, I believe this was still record when he got it. I could be wrong. Show you, that's kind of shows you the level of love that this game's got. Um, this month is it is now third place. This run was only twenty two days ago. I see it's lying down, which is I think the best <laughs> pose for speedrunning stadium because it's just like you know pretty relaxed isn't, game. You know, isn't worst as isn't worst as webcam basically always him just laid in bed. What is it with stadium speedrunners? It's it's how you should play the game. <laughs> it's just it's the comfiest speedrun. Yeah. He's not even holding the controller. Look at this speed run. Yeah, exactly. Ten, you just... ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gonna you know, play with my nose, talk a bit, lay on the gun, <laughs> lay on the bed. Oh. We're taking the piss, but Stadium Two is it, it's a grind of luck and knowledge. You need the game to play along with the strats you're going for, but you need to know exactly what move sets you're going up against possible team combinations and like every variation of a team um, and if you get bad luck how to and how yeah how, it. Uh, that's usual? like every pokemon run basically it is but this stadium like condenses it down into its purest form there's no movement execution there's no yeah there's yeah. no menuing it's it's purely well there is menuing but it's just mashing there, the there is strategy because of like team choices but oh, yeah, beyond yeah. that it is entirely rng it's no no it's this they have it's rng is like what teams they bring but there's definitely like they, they have set moves and you can know what they do and the damage rolls that they do and how to yeah how to act for different scenarios um so like oh yeah your your opponent's teams even have some rng to them yeah. but you choose always what to bring to a battle right yeah, you do, yeah. yeah. Um, although I think it's only from... I think it's um, Battle Factory style in that it's only sets of Pokemon yeah. you get to choose from. Yeah, you, you can't... You have to use the rental Pokemon. You're yeah. not allowed to use your Pokemon from your games. Otherwise, it would be... Too a easy. Bit, yeah. And it's, like, not really in the spirit of a speedrun to use other games to help you. Yeah. So. So this was yeah. Sorry, this was third place by Silent Wolf. We also have a second place by the man, the myth, the legend, Worcester. And it's worth pointing out while we're here that if you like Stadium Two or Stadium Speedruns in general, or you like Worcester, preferably a combination of the two. He's going to start doing a complete game Stadium 2 speedrun. Well, it's technically Saturday, but it's like already Saturday for them. So potentially any moment now he could start. Is that um, actually happening? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't know he had done that before. He's tweeted out about it um, yesterday. Um, cool. Fun fact, he's just started. Oh, no, don't go. Did you just go? <laughs> <laughs> if that, if he's, he's not doing it, guys. He, he just he, went live. That is astounding timing. We've we've just learned that he no his channel no longer exists. <laughs> Worst for is the next. <laughs> Worst has just gone live to tell you to come and watch the PS podcast. That's exactly what's going on. <laughs> so, this is another run. I, I'm amazed by the time save in the Team Rocket split, but he does have that wonderful thing of ranking all of his splits in his PB. You can tell there was plenty of time save to be had on anything that's a C split. So he was six and a half minutes ahead at one point. Pro scratch. And then Oh no, your suggestions are showing. Oh yeah, what what did my <laughs> suggestions show? Let's take a laugh. I don't even All I saw speed pass runs. versus runner. <laughs> All speedruns and opening eleven thousand I... yen of mystery Japanese Pokemon cards. I kinda want to see that. Yellow run. Where he's fighting the optional trainer because he has a level four Nidoran. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> Amazing highlight video. Mega Man. I don't know why it would recommend me that. I don't like Mega Man. Sorry. Feel free to boo wow. me in the comments. Imagine not liking Mega Man 2 speedruns. 
I've That's so good. I've played one Mega Man game and I didn't enjoy it, so I haven't bothered paying attention to the rest of them. I've I played one and I loved it, but you know. <laughs> basically a scrub. So we've gone we went from third by Silent Wolf, second by Worstone, so we have first place by Zewing, and shout outs to Potato Cap. The classic. But he doesn't play laid in a bed, so I don't know if this counts, I've got to be honest. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> Yeah, you can see his, you see his reflection when the screen goes black. Oh. I'm not creeping. I know. <laughs> it's in the video. Let the record show. But uh, you can see the similar. Well, you see basically the same strat for this last fight every time. Um, the Wobbuffet lead with, I imagine, uh, Mirror Coat. Mirror Coat? Magic Coat? One of them. And Counter. Survives on 8 HP. Or is that Destiny Bond? Oh, he's using Destiny Bond. Oh, so he didn't want him to survive. That sucks. Cool. I managed to highlight the, the worst bit of the run again. But How do you do it? I don't know. It's... I've traded in all of my speedrun skill for the ability to produce podcasts of everybody's failings. <laughs> yeah. As I think the Zerwing actually had the record for a long while in the category. In fact, it says at the bottom there, world record 211 by me. He is too good. Uh, so this one, the splits for this one are quite interesting. I think he goes down to plus, there you go, plus two, two minutes forty at one point. And it shows you the level of variance that they can get in this speed run. Gets a fantastic finish. That's the. Uh, that's just when everything oh, that was, goes right. That was on the same day as Worcester's run. Oh, was it? And she'd say, yeah, it was. Wow. Nice. Nice. Was it, was it back to back world records then? So, well, his was. So, Zerings was a 208, and he claims to have the record on the splits with a 211. What was Worcester's time? 209. 209. Yeah, so I guess Worcester. Uh, Worcester either had the record for a small amount of time or missed out on having the record by a few hours. I don't know it what is, kind of time frame. They might have pulled the, the, the keys around, or. Uh, I, I also pulled this in Backyard Baseball once, where I, I got the world record and lost it two hours later. <laughs> I'm sure there's, there was a, a fairly recent one where there was a, a Pokemon run that someone got the record, and then it was... Oh, it was, wasn't it round two, where Etiquette got the record, and Wartab was already on the next record when <laughs> that one finished. <laughs> no! <laughs> he was already doing the next record run. Oh, man. Obviously, it doesn't quite apply in such a, a a new a newer category. The other way around. Sorry, Wartab. Damn that salt in the wound, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. Also, <laughs> shout outs to when me and Worcester got the exact same time on the exact same day in Pearl any percent. <laughs> really? Oh mm. God, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that. that oh, I forgot that that happened. But yeah, damn. Yeah, that was that was back and forth for a few days as well, wasn't it? You guys were both. Trade in that record. That's trying really to get that fifty-seven. Uh, if you like Stadium Two, go watch Worcester, but in like an hour, please. Thank you. He's only <laughs> he's only doing this run to begin with, so you've already kind of seen it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Next up, and we have been talking about. This man, I think he's appeared in four, five podcasts. Well, we've only had five. Yeah, probably all of them at this point. Well, his second place Pokemon Coliseum runs. And a formal congratulations to Ryzakin for finally nabbing the record. By a huge fucking chunk. I know awesome. he got it. This is between him and Shiru, we've been tearing our hair out waiting for the Ryzakin's finally got the record, or Shiru's finally got the record. Ryzakin gets there first. So, this is... Yeah, this is... Come on, this is interesting because uh, Exarian... Th this is one of those uh, records where Exarian had it by, like, maybe 10 minutes for a really long time. And Ryzakin was inching and inching and inching closer. And now he's beaten it by a good margin himself. So, we, we always knew that Exarian's run was not nearly perfect. But it took... A lot more work from Aldella Rose Manip tool and other things, just uh, people learning more about the game, for somebody to finally be able to tackle Exarian's run. 
Yeah, Xavion's got that. You know, he's willing to sit there and route it out so much. He's the 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 base knowledge he will have built about the game just from routing it is going to give him such an advantage. If you're willing to do that work, not to say that it's the be all and end all. As you, know, mm. you don't have to route the game out, but if if you can do that, you will build up such a, a knowledge base about the game. Mm -hmm. And you can see with the stats here. Uh, it's very important how the route has emphasized Espeon now that we can manip it so closely. So Croc's stats are not good here. You can see special attack is 5, not boosted. Attack is 13, not boosted. Um, the only good stat out of the two is the speed is high on both of them. And uh, because Espeon has a perfect hidden power... 31 plus special attack and decent speed and attack. This is that's all you need now. That's what you need to get the world record. Yeah, sorry, Cosmo. I wasn't insinuating that Ryzen hasn't done the routing. I was just. It was at, at the time that Exarion basically broke Coliseum open. He was the big routing force mm -hmm. there and then. And that's that's what led to his like 10 minute record. It's like mm -hmm. everybody. It's taken a, a year or so, but everybody's caught up now. The, the Coliseum leaderboard is looking a lot tighter towards the top end now. Yeah. Really. And it's very much one of those games where you need to be one of the people routing it to understand the run well enough to get a world record. All right. That's shout-outs to Baltan as well. He was looking to threaten the record. Uh, pretty close yeah, to Xarion's he... times. Yeah, he's got the Japanese one. Has he? And uh, he did... I think he didn't do English for that long, and he got a, quite a decent time. Yeah, he was only three minutes behind Exarion. I'm curious how much... I'm presuming Japanese Japanese text must either save time or the man's a legend. Because <laughs> he's got a 332 on the Japanese version. Yeah, yeah um, I guess from that you could infer it's possible to get a sub-330 probably in Japan, but it's not possible to be certain. And on the subject of the RNG manip, it is an interesting point that uh, the Croconaw was not manipped at all. <laughs> it's it's a trash croc. Yeah. Ryzakin still does good things with it. I think he said that the, the highlights of the run was the uh, everything after Venus 2. But the rest of his run wasn't anything hugely special. The splits the splits were always ahead though. But I think yeah. he saves a chunk of time. The, the later end. the game goes, the less Croc is important. So it would make sense if he was even early and, and slowly progressed throughout the game. He just gets a couple of big big bestie splits right towards the end. Big congrats to him. I know he's been working on that for a while. So nice to see that pay off. Jiru Wen is the Emerald World Record. God damn. I've said it a month in month out now we're going to go mental when you actually get that <laughs> yeah it'll be first thing on the podcast <laughs> we're, not, we're gonna, just going to skip introductions yeah get, get a couple no of air horns in <laughs> <laughs> Shiru world record it's done Ryzakin is a very underrated runner take a look at this man's uh, man's legend fourth place in XD at the moment it's, I'm sure it did. He's got an emerald run, but I think he. He ran emerald with Torchic, didn't he? Yeah, and gold with Cyndaquil, I believe. So that Amazing. might not look like an impressive time on emerald, but sub 3 with Torchic is. silly. Especially with how much time they lose on the first lit. <laughs> Roxanne splits like 25 minutes. Yeah, God it's damn. it's worse than doing Charmander in Fire Red by a large margin. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean Charmander can still be competitive in Fire Red, even though it's the slower one now. But this is he's lost ten minutes in the first split alone, like compared to the Mudkit route because he has to get Combuscan well, beforehand. I think, I think to be fair, you do do like the bit, the route above, uh, you know, like the bit, oh, yeah, yeah. the next bit of the story. And then go back. The, the, you get what I mean. The Abra route yeah, yeah. and Rust Earth Tunnel. Well, you can't actually do that, but the story itself doesn't activate until after Roxanne. But yeah, he clear, probably clears the route out for experience. 
Damn. These uh, I'm, I'm always a big fan of the alternative starter runs. I remember a long time ago um, when MBM did uh, Torchic and Sapphire when people didn't know that it was like faster to do Mudkip, he would catch a Shroomish to beat the first gym oh, wow. rather than evolving. Huh. <laughs> Does that make sense? You're not particularly walled by anything other than Roxanne herself and the, the rock types within that gym. You can see the the time progression here. Last month was his 337, and two months ago 339. Another month before that, another 339. Steady improvement for a long time. I'm curious if he'll go ham on XD now. He's been away from that for a uh, few months. Hello, Etienne. So, that was the collar record. This is some new, well it would have been, some new Heart Gold Soul Silver tech. And I say would have been because it turns out it's useless. But yeah. We'll still look at it because it's a nice new tweak. So, um, you can't really see it from the video, but usually there's someone blocking you from entering the gym. Um, and you have to get the... You have to go and talk to Whitney in, in the thing and get the radio card or whatever. But uh, you can skip that with tweaking. And normally you would tweak um, like uh, uh, below and then do another tweak to get into the gym. But this is a bit faster. But then um, we've realized that you have to save and quit to do it like with the blue. If you know the blue tweak, you have to save and reset. And obviously, well, not obviously, but um, that messes up the Raikou minute because that's based on your initial seed. So, I mean, if you were to do that, you'd have to hit a new seed when you did the reset because uh, every time you reset, uh, there's a new RNG seed generated. Um, so, yeah, you can't do that strat, basically. <laughs> That's that people are finding this stuff still there. For anybody unfamiliar with tweaks, the the lines on screen, I was I'm pointing my mouse at them, but you can't see the mouse. The white lines on screen are the load points of the map, and tweaking works by crossing over multiple load points in one go, and the game just game gets confused, I guess, and it doesn't uh, yeah. handle loading or or doing that many loads in rapid succession. So that tweak adjusts your Z position, which is how far up and down you are. Oh yeah, that way it sinks through the floor. Yeah, but then you have to actually save and reset to get onto the right thing to enter the gym normally. God. So, yeah. We were talking uh, about... I think, oh, go on, man. I think the guy... Um, was trying to find a new tweak in in Kanto now to because at the moment in Kanto you have to go you 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 get there at Vermilion as usual and then you have to go all the way round to the other side of the Snorlax in order to uh, like tweak and despawn the Snorlax to get to the other side of Kanto and he was trying to find a way of um, tweaking from the Vermilion side to um, actually despawn the Snorlax from there rather than having to go all the way around. Oh, that's cool. Heart Gold Soul Silver any percent is weirdly broken for such a late gen game. Yeah. Considering it's very that, interesting. Considering it came before like Gen 5 on the same console. And mm -hmm. which is just not that broken at all. Also shout out to video yeah. re recommendations. Now that it's a quiet channel it's all all my weeb songs. Just get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, uh, potentially stuff to one to watch out for is new Heart Gold Soul Silver Ooh, Tech. He dropped it. <laughs> dropped it. Give he it the dro give it the stamp. I also thought you were gonna drop it on Coliseum. I was really expecting it. Well, Coliseum, the Ryzenkin's got a run that he's happy with now. Coliseum's one to watch was one to watch for the past three or four months. Ryzenkin on Coliseum. 
Now you've watched it, hopefully. <laughs> now you've watched it. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've given it the stamp of approval. So our next one, and we might as well just open this up while we're here. We spoke about these multitude of Elite Four Round 2 runs last month. Um, they actually got the leaderboard added. God bless Wartab. And with it has come a bunch of new PBs. So Etiquette not has not... I don't think he's really been speedrunning at all much this month. Um, not, not improved his time. But Emray and Wartab have, I think, had multiple PBs. Emray's been going quite nuts on this. Nice to see the uh, the leaderboards get or well, just happen. New categories are always interesting. I believe I saw someone in chat say that Emre has the record now. But I don't know if that's like a very recent thing or if they're unaware of War Tab's run. A War Tab actually doing Elite Four Round Two attempts straight up. I know last month like Emre and Etiquette were doing any percent attempts and then extending them into Round Two. Then their world record is mine. Yeah. <laughs> Wartab claims it. Yeah, you can't really do that with the other round two categories. Just it's, um, you it's know, a, continue. It was a little bit of... Well, I think Wartab was saying last month is a little bit of a stretch for this one because you have to do a larger market trip. So it takes like yeah. an extra minute to set up, but it's still not unreasonable for any percent runs. Damn. Emre was on pace to beat it and then got crit by Agron. We should watch that. Dev that would be a great highlight for this podcast, as soon as we are the Terrible Moments podcast. <laughs> I don't have that to hand. Unless somebody wants to link it in chat. Hint, hint. Rebrand Terrible bullied. Speedruns podcast episode 6. Emre's just been getting constantly bullied by Oras so much recently. I did see a tweet from her saying that she might take a break for a bit. Yeah, because I think she lost multiple... 307 runs to there was like one thing on Phoebe that she kept get she get she kept getting killed by and I can't remember what it was offhand. Sheer code? No, that was that's on Glacier. It was something on Phoebe, oh, I think. Yeah. I <laughs> God bless Araya in the chat. We get to watch another devastating mo moment on the PSR podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Frame rate. <gasps> he crit me! Okay, hold on. Oh, damn, that's the round two. What's that? Oh, that's on a current PB as well. Oh, that's harsh. I don't feel that good about this, I've got to be honest. There was a little bit of... Uh... And it lived! Oh, no! That sucks. Is that the last Pokemon, or basically? I know it's the last fight, but is that the last? No, There's no. like bit, bit, two bit. more. I, Metacross is normally the last one, I'd say. Yeah, that's awful, though. Interesting. Didn't Mega evolve Rayquaza? Could have won if she Mega evolved. What does he use? Smackdown or Stone Edge? Oh, you can't Mega Evolve Rayquaza because they Mega Evolved the Groudon? No, Groudon's Primal Reversion. You should still be able to Mega. Uh, can you do both in the same? Yeah. Oh, wow. You can. Primal oh! Doesn't oh. I, know. I know Primal's a thing that it kind of comes in with, isn't it? It's not a, an activated one. If I remember rightly. <laughs> I just you can got... even Primal twice. Amazing. Yeah. Damn. I keep you, out. Just I... Theoretically. You can primal twice and mega Rayquaza. <laughs> Christ. Hashtag broken. I've got the, the volume turned really low on this uh, clip, so all I hear occasionally is Emre go, It crit me! <laughs> Nothing else. I can't hear anything else. God, so that would have been a, a round of 421. Fuck. That's an awful place to lose it as well. I wonder why she was smacked down in the Agron, but I guess that's to break sturdy. Yeah, harsh words in the description here as well. Heck, Rayquaza. It's somebody said that everybody complains about the Rayquaza. These PBs. Wartab got bad Ray, Emre got bad Ray. 
Just, just no one likes Ray. Yeah. Nobody likes Ray in Emerald either. It's always a bad Ray there. Not 420. Just actually minute. died on Sydney. Sydney 1 or Sydney 2 with Ray. That must be, I don't know. I don't know the speedrun. Must be Sydney 2. Sydney 2. Well, we've had Emre's bad moment. Let's find war tabs. <laughs> uh, it's somewhere around here. Chunky PB as well. Look at that. Xenia 2 split. Minus 5 foot. I can't tell if those stats along the bottom of the screen are Rayquaza's or not. it would be astounding if they were. I guess not, because he said it was terrible. No, every legendary has three 31 IVs, so... That, that must be the Lati... The Lati whatnot. I, I don't like... know which one he gets in this. Sapphire is very different to Auras, to Ruby for Rayquaza. Teach completely different moves, damn. That's, I find that fascinating as well, because I, I think I, both versions of the game are still fairly uh, competitive for the any percent route as well. Despite basically using completely different strats. Well, not completely different, but basically get a different Pokemon halfway through. If you could die any time, Wartab, that'd be great. I've got to be honest. I was expecting <laughs> so many cuts. Hurry up and die. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly lose your run, damn it. <laughs> it's here. Oh, damn. You got crit by Dragon Claw as well. That's. I was about to say, maybe he doesn't actually die and he just wants his run showcased. <laughs> <laughs> it felt bad that we were watching Emre's clip for so long. <laughs> it just wanted some screen time. <laughs> so what's the, what's the strat here then? Are we going to use Kyogre or are we just going to... You got crit again, are you kidding? Uh, that was PSR in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> it was, crit once, was it you early... have to get crit again. And somebody was saying that that red race was the, the epitome of Pokemon speedruns. Wattab uh, gets double crit. Damn, how much did that guy live on? Wow! That was a pixel of health. Oh my god. Did you And you didn't save then? You actually have to go back and... What did you save? Oh, Sydney's the first fight, isn't he? Of course. Sure. <laughs> I ran Gen 3 at some point. <laughs> Don't claim that I didn't. There you go, guys. World Record has a death in it. Literally free. Go get it, guys. <laughs> So, for our final point, and I'm going to have to do a bit of scrolling before I pull this across, because it's a little bit far down this list, but it's a list, so that should give it away what we're talking about. We have the GD, AGD schedule. So, oh, it's not there. Thank you, scrolling. That's great. Where are we? Oh, come on. There we go. There we are. Gunner and Pokeguy will be racing Pokemon Gold at AGDQ 2019. Not much more to say about that. It's just really what it's going to be. We both put in the same estimate, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Good luck to them. It's going to be a little while away. When is it? Early January? If they'll manip. That'd be interesting. It's quite a difficult one in gold, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to I... first and second place racing. Sorry, Crafted, go ahead. I think you can have a few tries at it, depending on what you set your time to, or whatever. So, yeah. don't know, we'll see. It's uh, It or can make for a... Might bit of a poor race if you you end up with somebody who gets it first and then somebody who takes three or four attempts there. Yeah, there might there might be a minute where there's like a two or three frame window where you can get decent ones or whatever. Mm. Yeah, they're talking a bit about that. Like, um, 
potentially just doing the manip but taking backups because the backups are good enough yeah for a race yeah it's just been pointed out as well 325 is a manly estimate 12 minutes of error from the record well 11 sorry so is it that is a big boy estimate hmm it's also a brave move considering the uh, tendency for Pokemon speedruns at GDQs to not go well. <laughs> uh, bit infamous for that. Yeah, we uh, in this cross for I'm interested to see how that goes down. I'm interested to see as well if anything new will be found between then and now. Because Gunner's, Gunner's record's only a month old. I know he was quite happy with that run. I think. Yeah, look at well, his run ever. His was the first run with all the encounter minutes. Was it? Um... Oh yeah, it yeah, was. It was literally his first attempt where he got all the minutes. That professional thumbnail. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I don't like those thumbnails. I like to see what the video actually... It looks like. I do too, but it's difficult sometimes to find something good. There's a lot, especially as well, I, I record a lot, well I have to record basically all of my videos in uh, interlaced, so a single frame of it always looks ugly, because it's basically two half frames meshed on top of each other. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, yeah, Google, since I'm in progressive scan, Google got enough information to figure out that I always like to pick the Pikachu intro screen for my <laughs> video. So now I just suggest it to me. Now, yeah. Shouts to uh, Hal Standard being uh, interlaced until the Wii, I think. Well, you but... guys are screwed too because you're at fifty hertz and the game is closer <laughs> to sixty. Uh, to be fair, a lot of CRTs. It it was very quickly. 60 hertz was very quickly integrated into CRTs. It's quite difficult to find a CRT that doesn't work with 60 hertz. Oh, sure, you could do a CRT and be okay. Or any kind of TV in general. 50 hertz was like the accepted standard, but it wasn't used that widely. Well, it was used. It was used, but it was it wasn't the only one. But it's not particularly cool. difficult. Podcast. Hey, you know that you without YouTube, none of this would be possible. <laughs> think as well we did mention this last time but we'll mention it again we've got Kizer on and Ty Kevin at GDQX next month when exactly is yep. that I forgot when or what when, I can say both though. when so when it is the 26th through the 28th of October I will be going to ADGDQ, AGDQ as well um, I tend to go to all the GDQ events if, if I can um so but basically what's happening is they wanted to do a gdq event at twitchcon so they created gdq express or gdqx for twitchcon uh Kizaron is doing an rta run of crystal yes okay uh yes crystal and i am doing a tas of pokemon yellow nsc in 10 minutes and 17 seconds so you're uh also, you're also on, on there for uh what is that other one hyper princess ah uh, yes <laughs> uh dwango is listed as the runner for that but it's it's actually it was created by serolith and me and dwango will be commentating it it's very interesting it's like a shoot 'em up kind of game like a, 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 a it's kind of like a cross between uh what, what is it um chef boyardee presents uh Charles Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Guide in the Hoops Barkley Saga and <laughs> what? and a uh, classic arcade shoot 'em up. Um that that game I just mentioned with the long title is a downloadable like 32-bit ancient game. So it has that kind of like feel where it's a very low budget made in somebody's basement game, but it also is a at the same time a relatively well built arcade shoot 'em up. So, I yeah. guess an indie game is what I was trying to get at with the description there. It's an indie game, but so it's this, an arcade shoot 'em up. 
So this starts in three weeks' time. Although yes. the Pokemon runs will be on the Sunday. So yep. we'll be talk we'll be uh, scrutinizing your runs on the next podcast, no pressure. <laughs> I will give a very quick shout out as well. Zelda's gonna be doing Super Monkey Ball One. That's gonna be a very good run. Yeah. I'm cheating though because mine can't fail. <laughs> I like that your estimate on the schedule as well is exactly seventeen forty one. Uh, yeah, it, it's actually wrong because it's an <laughs> estimate of the first pass at the task we did. So, <laughs> damn. But it'll be actually somewhat accurate for the overall time it takes because what we're going to do is I'll, I'll give a little sneak peek here. We're going to use the Pokemon Coliseum exploit to gain total control of the GameCube to load GBI to do the console verification of the tasks. So it's going to take about. 1147 or whatever in the end to play back the tasks doing the Coliseum exploit. Nice. So you'll get to see using Coliseum to total control a GameCube to gain total control of a Game Boy player to play Pokemon Yellow perfectly. Tassing is cheating. <laughs> Basically, illegal. that's a controversial opinion, sir. <laughs> we don't allow it on this podcast. I'm, I'm putting my thing, my, my, I'm ruling it out. It's gone. So what you're saying <laughs> is, when I finally get around to passing Pokemon Blue, you're, you're not even going to mention it. No, you are banned. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Feel free to disconnect from the Discord channel. That's gross. I'm, not, I'm actually more, uh, slightly more interested in the. Colosseum exploit to see how you load GBI in the first place. Then uh... it's quite interesting. I've not actually seen that done, but yeah, I definitely check those out. Uh, obviously, AGDQ is a little while away, but GDQX next, well, October twenty sixth to the twenty eighth should be good. With that, we come to Amoeba's favorite part of the podcast: the leaderboard roundup. I did say we were slightly light on main news. I wasn't kidding. We uh, Not many records this month. Because I think everybody kind of tired themselves out from records last time. So we'll start off with a classic red. Obviously we've already spoken about Poke Guy's first place. Crazy Dan got himself ninth. He was... Uh, I think he was in. He was at least in one of the races. I think I saw he was in both. Could be wrong. The red. I believe he was in both. Mm -hmm. and a right, a right yeah, he well. had like a really bad first day and a good second day. Or maybe the other way around. The same as you. You had the the bad first day and good second day as well, didn't you? Yeah, I can't remember exactly. But yeah, he was there both of them. Araya pointed out a little bit earlier as well that Crazy Dan is the only person that appears on every single leaderboard in red. Just gonna verify that they're correct. Yes, they are. If we ignore Japanese language, I think. Or is he on? No, um, he's not. Amazing. That would be cool if he was on Japanese as well. We can only ask for so much. It's kind of silly that Red Glitchless has three hundred and twenty-one runners, and yet only one person ever has done five all five categories. Because <laughs> that's not that many categories. No, I'd never doubt Araya. And verify Araya then. Yeah, ninth for Crazy Dan. Twenty uh, fifth for Head Bob, who I believe is another one that has kind of appeared frequently in these roundups. I could be wrong. Let's take a look. Yeah, there we go. So was in last month's with a one fifty three. Yeah, took uh, improved that up to a one fifty one. Also got a yellow PB. Sick. Also runs Emerald. I didn't know that. Oh, he got the sub 205. He's on my respect list. <laughs> Am I on your respect list? I've got a 201. There you go. Do I count? I, th I think so. The, <laughs> the sub 205 is the, is my respect I think lit cut off. Oh, I had a 201. Pokemon Yellow Speed Runs. I had a 201 in game time. It's a 203 real time. Mm. I, I just scrape in. I'm a legit speedrunner, guys. 45th for this guy. Congrats, Ty. 62nd for Blake Turnatron. 
who again I think appeared at least in one of the recent podcasts. Oh, it's three. Oh, it was gold that they appeared in last time. But yeah, I recognise this name. A very recent nice. runner. It's always good to see new people improving. Yeah, I, like I love that. watching those times. You can see how much he's been working because he got twenty minutes improved in gold and like several minutes in red. Yeah, I like seeing the. I like seeing the same people show up. Uh, podcast after podcast. Nice, just watching people do these improvements. Uh, 150 second for 8 Echo. Shout out to this person for getting their run verified about 5 minutes before the podcast went up. Oh no, did they change the numbers again? I literally just yesterday corrected all of the the updates. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I went... I, uh, oh, there must have been and, two more. Well, myself because... and Skoa were talking on like about an hour and a half ago before the podcast started. Mm -hmm. And I'd gone through the leaderboards again just to catch all of the recent ones. And then mm -hmm. as we were talking about something else unrelated... Um, I refreshed the Pokemon page and eight echoes popped up. So, I, and this was like five minutes before the podcast started. Like, damn. yeah. So there were eleven red PVs in the last. Pretty sick. Yeah, that's actually almost a quiet month for red. I think. Uh, I think we were up to like fourteen the month before. Hundred and seventieth? Hundred and seventy first now for Korgoth. Again, I think that's a that's a name that rings a bell, but I could just be making it up at this point. Oh, three months ago might be making that up. <laughs> Don't know if my memory's that good. Mm -hmm. Good to see improvement there. Two hundred and thirty fifth for Alagoa. Uh two hundred and fifty fourth for Drunkle Titus, a hell of a name. Love, love the name. Two ninety third for Curry Base. If only his time was as good as his name. You can't be mean like that. The speedrun is as good as you want it to be. If you only wanted to get a two forty in Pokemon Red and you get a two forty, you've done well. And then three or fourth, on a three or fifth for Shorv. That rounds up the the red glitchless. Uh, we did get a couple of NSC PVs. Crazy. That's a 321 unique red runners now. Yeah. On the leaderboard. Pretty I think cool. we talked about it going over 300 on like the second podcast. There's still a regular influx of runners. Crazy and down the pits. Gone, man. It's a, oh, it's a decent count, actually, of how many people are somewhat active because a lot of the people who are really inactive end up taking runs down. So. Mm. It's it's still a decent measure of activity. Right. Crazy Dan shows up on the NSC leaderboard as well. Eleventh. You can see the uh, the strats that have been out now have been out for a good while because the the top end of the leaderboard is looking quite condensed. Thirty seconds separates first and seventeenth. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like refunked up in here. Twenty sixth for Jim Freak. That was to Jim Freak, and forty ninth for I believe this is pronounced Le Cremeter. Sounds French, but then he's from Germany, so God knows. The Germans are showing up in red again as well. I'm sure this was a theme. RBO gets sixth place for Pseudo Trainer. I think it's another one that. Showing up fairly often. Yeah, so RBO. His RBO PB was from last month. He's also done Pokemon Yellow. Nice. Oh yeah, Sudo has been grinding that RBO time. Nothing in Pocket Monster Stadium, as per usual. Go over to Ty's favourite. It's seventh place for Araya. Yellow! And Araya. <laughs> I don't know. Where's Araya from? I don't recognize that flag. The Netherlands. Um, huh? Yes, he is from... Surprisingly similar to... Deutschland, uh, because it's, that's Germany, but <laughs> the Dutch people. Dutchland. <laughs> yes. Deutschland. Surprisingly similar to the flag next to Babel's name. 
That's Luxembourg. Luxembourg. <laughs> and then, is, is Hammer Show from the Netherlands as well? I can't tell if that's yeah. the same flag or not. Ooh. I think so, yeah. yeah. Yep, Hammer and Araya are both Dutch. Nice. Yeah, seventh place for Araya. Eighth for, is it Bobel? Bobel? Bobel. Bobel. Eleventh for the Brit. Shouts to Steffit. Another one that's been PBing very often recently. One I'm sure what? this is one to watch. We'll give it the stamp. I've only Ooh. I've only had one so far. But look at look at the rate of PBs. I've only actually been on SRC for eight months. But something silly like sixteen PBs across three he games. He is. Yeah, you might. I, I might call him the next one. I'm gonna call him the next one. What? The next Juan to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Damn. the pun. Shut the fucking stream down. Get it, close it off, it's terrible. SL Weed, another one that has had regular PBs across the last few months. Picks mm -hmm. himself up a 157 in yellow. The big lad. 26th for Krachel. Still a cool name. Another German. The Germans are still out in force. How they're doing it. 46th for Headbob. Hello, Headbob. I see you in the chat. And 73rd for Max Cash. A little sad that uh, Tyro hasn't come back for more Pikachu runs. I know he did yeah, got the PB. Well, sad. We could say that. I would like to see a Nidoran run from Tyro as well. That would be. Hmm. That would be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm a sucker for the alternative starter runs. <laughs> hey, you Pikachu doesn't get a run this time, but it had big runs last month. That's true. TCG gone a bit. Oh, what's the new run? <gasps> Guys, a new run is awaiting verification in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. As of a minute ago? As of a minute ago. Shall we have shall we have a look? You PB'd. Congratulations, Pokey Guy, on your 208.23 in Sapphire. Epic. I would just stick a verify button on that, but that really would be poor form. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly sure we can just trust PSR Pokey Guy. But... <laughs> verifies a run. Wor Worcester will literally strip me of whatever power I have on these leaderboards if I click that button. That would be potentially unethical. <laughs> yeah, it would not be. I'm joking. It would not be a very good move. You should treat everybody with the same level of uh, scrutiny Thank you. and respect. That's the word. <laughs> yes, respect for the and leaderboards. The but... Yeah, that too. So back to TCG. Third place for Bla Blaze Flozard. That is a <laughs> difficult name to pronounce. Uh, another one that I'm fairly sure has appeared in multiple podcasts at this point on TCG. It's Definitely. wow. Two, two days in a row, any percent PBs. We'll also get to his all cards uh, PB in a second. Yeah, and he's wow, three any percent PBs last month. I didn't realize how nuts he'd gone on this. Yeah, big runner for TCG. Also, fourth place for Ooj. I'm sticking by the pronunciation of that name. <laughs> and obviously Blaze not also Not Triple O AJ. Not Triple O AJ, Oosh. And then first place in all cards for Blaze. So Bla big big month for Blaze. Yeah, yeah the uh TCG um dis part of this PSR Discord has been blowing up in the last few months. Yeah, so we, it's uh We gave it pretty a bit, popular. Gave it his own uh, main point last month because um, so the GTNTG record and I think Ouj Blaze and a couple of other people got very high times it was just, they've been doing a lot of routing um, I don't think any of these three recent runners actually use the same route I think they all use something slightly different hmm. use different things in a different order it's a, it's a, I'm going to give it another stamp. It's a game to watch because the the routing is currently in flux. So. It's also still muted for me. <laughs> oh, the uh, the Discord. 
Yeah, has been muted for about four months now. I'm telling you, man, the, the, uh, the top tier way to do the Pokemon speedruns Discord is to mute everything and just unmute stuff as you take interest in it. I have most of that Discord muted. Very fair. You just pop in for the ones that you haven't seen for a while. Shout to never going into the Gen 5 Discord. <gasps> Not at all biased. <laughs> I mean, I don't go into the Gen 1s at uh, all. I have all of the Gen 1 main series muted, so... <laughs> yeah, I tend to read everything, but only take notifications for the really, really important ones. I, I drop into ones as I'm taking interest in them. We have a nice spread of people here with um, knowledges in different games. It's like, Ty, you're, a, you're definitely the most knowledgeable for the, the Gen 1 runs here. Um, Gen 2 is kind of like a crossover between you and Crafted. Gen 3 is probably my specialty. And then Gen 4 is Crafted and Scour. And yeah. same for Gen 5. Yeah, we could probably use more on the Gen 2 front because I actually know nothing about Gen 2. Yeah, Gen, <laughs> we, we could use somebody that knows anything about Gen 2. And then we basically rely on chat for Gen 6 and 7. <laughs> it's, it's like... I know things about Gen 2 three years ago. <laughs> yes. Crafted's great if, if, if it's real basic and we've been doing it for a while. Crafted remembers it from when he ran the games. Yeah. I guess I, I do know a little bit mostly just because of the similarities with Gen 1 with like routing and um, minips. So I tend to pick up all the discussion. But that's about all. But yeah, Snap! Uh, I guess you could say that the number of people who PB'd is kind of reflective of why they have their own community almost mm. within the PSR community because it's just a huge amount of play it's right it's actually rivaling the amount of play on red snap is a surprisingly popular speedrun one well, not surprising but considering it's a side game for pokemon which normally do not get a lot of love and an N64 game which is difficult to obtain yeah and requires play on the japanese version to play optimally <laughs> are any of these runs on emulator or do they not allow you can't even play it on an emulator. Oh, wow. That's part of the problem of, of Snap right now is that you can play it on the virtual console. There's actually tabs for Wii VC and Wii U VC. Um, but there, there is not a way to emulate N64 Snap at the moment. The emulator is not good enough for it. Cool. The, actual, the technical reason is it can't emulate the... Um, pointer where you're taking a picture properly so it can't detect that you're looking at a pokemon and therefore you, it won't ever let you take a picture why are emulators shit <laughs> why are they all terrible apart from gamba uh the psr gambate like the only good emulator but yeah. we'll, we'll have to do that on uh Episode 7. <laughs> have me back and I'll explain well, why. It <laughs> Ty Kevin emulator. Uh, emulator special. <laughs> so yeah, Snap gets 9... Oh, well, the any percent category gets 9 new PBs. 4th place for Calcium Lemon. Who, I think... I don't know if it's a new name, but I don't recognize that one. From one. He's affiliated with CC Neverender. I met him in their uh, cadre at GDQ. Big recent Actually, runner, like two PBs this month actually. Got a lower twenty one oh three and then dropped it to a twenty. It's interesting. Uh, CC Neverender himself picks up a PB. Nice to see. For sixth place, fourteenth for Danimal Sounds. Nice. Seventeenth for Full Air. I think you've uh, corrected this one, haven't you, Ty? Because I don't recognise half of these names. <laughs> don't, re don't remember writing any of these down. 18th for Dayman. Ah! <laughs> someone's someone's going to get that reference at some point so I don't look insane. Please. 19th for Vol Volcara? Volcara? Volcara. Dayman is pretty funny. I, I get that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 23rd for You Are Penguin. That's another one I'm sure is I've seen frequently. Yeah, so multiple PBs a couple of months ago and three months ago. Cool. Twenty-four for CJ. It's all good. And by Christ, did it take me a long time to figure out what that username said? 
Oh, See, really? Siege it's all good. It's the best I came up with for a long while. Fighter of the Night, man. And 68th for Sin Regalus. And then 100%. So we didn't. It definitely seems like the, the VC categories are a lot less loved. No PBs in any of them. Uh, mm. Which is understandable. I think. Uh. The best comparison I can think of is Mario 64. Definitely the, the main category to run is on the 64 version, despite it being the slowest of the three, just because it's the original. Mm -hmm. A lot of tradition behind that. Yeah. So 100%, CC Neverender gets himself a PB here as well for fourth. And then 18th for CJ It's All Good again. The double P. Interesting that the only 100% PBs come from people that also PB'd in any percent. Don't know if there's a, a, a link there or not. That's it for Snap for now. Stadium 1 got a little bit of love, but nothing like Stadium 2. Uh, 15th for Momo. Another German runner. Gunner just got fucked. Do we have live commentary on a Gunner fucked run, Skoa? What happened? He just. He was on the um, SSN rival fight and just kept missing over and over again against Ivysaur. Jeez. Oh no! What kind of pace? Um, 36, 34 Misty. Okay, so, so pretty good run. Pretty yeah. good run. There's live, live news fresh off the press. 25th in Stadium 4. Ooh, where is it? No, 26th now for sideburns. We've had a new PB somewhere in here then. Where is it? Oh, 18th for get low. Congratulations, get low. That one's only just gone up. Very cool. Oh, actually, I've actually in the notes I've got 27th for get low. So I guess the they had a PB verified at some point today. Congrats to them. Moving on to the next main game, it's gold. Araya makes another appearance in 5th. I forgot to mention, actually, in the last time we spoke about Araya, Araya also did a trifecta speedrun this month, which was red, gold, and sapphire back-to-back. -back. Sapphire. Sapphire, yeah. Uh, I, imagine, I think I saw a tweet from them saying that they'll be doing another one soon. That's an interesting set of speedruns. I do think it's a, it's an interesting mix. Like, which is worse? Would you rather do red, gold, sapphire, or would you rather do yellow, uh, crystal, emerald? I personally think that the third game trifecta is more interesting, but I could see why you would do uh, first games trifecta. But it's like, which one do you reckon is worse? Because emerald is significantly easier and, well, significantly less risky. Of a speed run, and yeah, we'll say with arguably nicer, but then you have you, the trade-off is that you do yellow instead of red. <laughs> like, well, I think yellow is still more consistent than red in terms of, of the times you get. It's just that you are likely to die at the end in some way. Mm -hmm. So, I think the consistency would be better in the third game trifecta. I'm not really sure, though, the consistency difference between gold and crystal. Uh, I think it, that's fairly similar. I could I could be talking out my ass because none of us are Gen 2 experts. But... Alright, it says he's going to be doing another run of the trifectas tomorrow. That'd be yeah. good. Juanli, please do a third game trifecta tomorrow. You should race Araya. I reckon <laughs> that, that'd actually be fairly close, wouldn't it? Because you... Emerald loses a lot of time to Sapphire, but on average, Yellow probably loses about the same time to Red. <laughs> like, and Crystal and Gold are fairly comparable. Yeah, Yellow go. loses, what, seven? Eight minutes? No, it's more. It's a nine minutes to Red. Mm. And Emerald's, Emerald's like a a 2.30 and Sapphire's a two two hour run. <laughs> so it's like half an hour there. But way longer? Emerald, Platinum, and White 2 Trifecta. <sighs> Weird. <sighs> Waiting for Tyrant to come back for that crafted? <laughs> yes. 
Because Tyrant, Tyrant was doing Emerald runs the other day. Gen 5 doesn't even have a third game. You can't do Emerald and then a Gen 5 game. Wrong. White 2 is counts as the... <laughs> the, the Which is the, you, gotta, the, you gotta do the quadfecta and do yellow, crystal, emerald, platinum. That would be flavorful. God. That'd be a... That, would anybody actually be able to do that at a high level? At any, at like, has anybody known all of those runs? Because that is such a widespread. Has Worcester not run would like qualify every game? if he had run red, uh, red and yellow recent. Worcester, uh, that's the thing. Worcester pro is probably the only person that's done high level runs of all four, but it has been a long time since he touched yellow, crystal, or emerald. <laughs> and then Crafted's probably and the platinum. next closest. Well, he hasn't done platinum in platinum glitches since 2016. Oh, well. true, yeah, Christ. It's weird because I feel like Worcester's been doing Gen Four for a while, but I guess he hasn't really done platinum for a bit. Well, I guess he did run two not too long ago, so. I guess the best option is actually crafted then. He's just got to scrub up on crystal and emerald and yellow quite a lot. I don't, you've never done yellow, have you? No, I haven't done yellow. God. Anybody... Right, well, you're learning that now. That's a that's a weird thing that it's it's four games, and that I don't think there is actually anybody that's good enough. Or there's only one person that's ever run all four, and I don't think there's anybody that's actively good enough right now to do all four. Why not do the Gen One through Three Saga and do Red, Yellow, Gold, Crystal, Sapphire, Emerald? God, that sounds like don't... a slog, though. Can you imagine well, doing you sapphires have... in there? So I'm out. <laughs> imagine doing Gold and then Crystal. Imagine doing Radio Tower twice. Yeah, you you have to do it in that order too. Ugh. Oh, no, I've got the best trifecta. I've got then. Uh, Fire Red round two, Platinum round two, Auras round two. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I actually like that. Oh, there's definitely well. nobody that can do that right now. I'm that, two that's... thirds of the way there. <laughs> yeah, Crafted just learned Auras round two. God, yeah. <laughs> crafted when? <laughs> God, that be that would actually be really amazing. That would be another one that's a real widespread of uh, execution styles. Because Fire Red Round Two is all is all knowledge based um, adaptability, and then like Platinum Round Two's what Gen Four manipulations. Got that and, nutty chain manip. The nutty chain manip, and then Oras is for three hours, and then chain manip. <laughs> then Oras is like could, okay. If you want to get into most most versatility, you would have to do something like Fire Red Round Two, uh, Gen One glitch list, either red or yellow, a uh, Gen One One Five One run, <sighs> uh, Gen One NSC run. And yeah, you then don't you don't need to do in... NSC and One Five One. I think One okay, Five One will then. cover just, it. Just do One Five One, and then um, uh, throw in TCG. Oh no no! Because not even. Completely... We're just looking at main games. Christ, you could throw you could throw every side game under the sun, and if you're going to do that, God, it gets to infinity. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> God, I think if you're going for main Rain games, top. I like I like the idea Gen One glitchless of some kind and Gen One One Five One. You don't really need to do Gen Two because Gen One. Uh, Fire Red Round Two covers a whack. Platinum Shit. round two kind of covers the other whack. That's it's like does all of that kind of manipulation stuff, and then you'd probably need something like you. But to be honest, Auras or Auras round two would do it. I think the round twos pretty much cover everything. And if you wanted the full spectrum of execution, you'd just throw the Gen one runs in there. There's not much else that you do elsewhere that isn't covered by those runs. Right, oh, that was a fun detail. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they do gold or something? <laughs> Yeah, what were okay, we doing? Okay, so so back to gold. <laughs> but back to Pokemon. Forgetting De Detective Pikachu. No, what have you been banned once already? Calm yourself. <laughs> so gold glitchless. Yes, fifth place for Araya. Congratulations. Do the tri do the trifecta, the regular one, not the freaky ones that we just came up with. Fifty ninth for Lava Star. Who again, I think is another one, another name that I recognise. Okay, I, I sometimes just make this up though, so let's see if I'm. No, we've it. mentioned him a few times before. Wow, this this range of games. Zelda Two, Ducktales. Then there's Pokemon Duck Gold. Tetris. 
Yeah, so Arcade loads of gold Mega. runs, actually, all in the last month. Sonic Chaos. Look at this range of games. Superboy 4. Battle for Bikini Bottom. The man but has range. the thing is, has he run Cars 2 on the DS? <laughs> I'm genuinely scrolling just in case. <laughs> No, I know he hasn't, because I'm, like, the moderator <laughs> for that game. <laughs> Super Mario Land, that's an excellent speedrun. What a lad. Oh, Amoeba, when will you do that again? Drafted, I can literally remove you from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Get rid. I was terrible at that. Uh, oh, I've clicked the wrong one. Frozen Olaf's Quest. <laughs> And then the new leaderboard in 80% NSC actually gets a new run by Lava Star. I think Totodiles wasn't there last time, but it's an older run. We'll mention that while we're here, because we're nice people like that. Are we? No. <laughs> Stadium 2 gets the big three like we mentioned, so we won't go back into there. There were no other PBs, uh, I believe. No, I'm right. Sapphire. No, that's Crystal. Sapphire. Attempt number two. No PBs for Crystal. Four times for the Gen 2 runs. Sapphire gets fifth place for Quay Lagging. Uh, this man is like top 10 in every game he touches, I think. Or oh, he may have dropped. No, he's still 10th place in red. We're still holding on to that. Ooh. No, nice, consistent speedrunner. Uh, there will be an 8th place for Poke Guy, right here. I haven't verified it yet because I'm trash. Uh, fifth place on Japanese for Buster. It's not here either because Buster doesn't like submit his runs because he's also trash. We're all just trash. <laughs> Big group of degenerates in the PSR community. <laughs> Every run ever done, trash. Trash. How about that Heinz time though? Eight minutes ahead of second place. I think uh, I think he thought that run was trash. Ironically. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I think he actually wants to beat it. Yeah. Uh, no PB for Pokemon Channel, but it is a tradition to come in here and tell you how terrible this fucking layout is. <laughs> oh my goodness, no! Get rid. <laughs> but we do get to go into pinball. Pikachu noticed the weed. <laughs> God bless. Sixth place, Ruby Field speedrunner, Camembri. I think that's how you pronounce it. The only pinball PB that we got this month. I think that's the first time we've ever actually gone into pinball. It's not, because Complete Pokedex was here four months ago. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I've been paying attention. <laughs> that exact reference. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here. I, do, I remember because that category was literally created, um, I think, just before the second podcast. Uh, that was a whole debate. That category was really active for like a, a week or two. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just no one does it. Well, 360 Chrism started with it. Well, it, it, Escape for a Living did it like that with that 16 hour run a couple of years ago. And then 360 Chrism took an interest in it. Um, and then the discussions that came, that the routing discussions that came from that um, spurred uh, like all the people that were routing it basically to do runs. There is like. Drykian is the main guy that delved into the code to figure out a lot of the uh, spawn requirements for some of the weirder Pokemon. G Car's an existing runner that also helped route, and then there's me as well. We were all just basically routing it, and we all basically just threw a run together so that we can show something off for the work that we did. I'm actually really glad still that Drykian's is the, the top time, because he did the most work towards it. It's nice to see. Moving on to another side game, Colosseum obviously gets its new recce from Ryzikin. Ninth place as well for Juan Lee Ways, who is no. another regular face. We'll see him again in a bit in, a bit in Emerald. Has been showing up, one. showing up all over the place. Yep. I like. He Juan is Lee. really learning all of the Gen th one through three stuff. Yeah, it's a it's a. It's an in a good sign when uh, runners can kind of jump all over the place because Colosseum is a very different speed run to, you know, a Gen One, Gen Two run, mm -hmm. even Gen Three. It's it's something else. Fire Red Round Two. Shout outs to my boy JP Zeno. I know he was taking a break from work to drop into the podcast a bit ago. 
he's nearly there for his sub three forty. But this is a this is a guy that's been working on this category for a while. So mm -hmm. showing up in about well, that's that's got to be four different podcasts he's had a PB in. And he's had two in the last month. He improved uh, two and a half minutes twenty seven days ago, and then he improved another minute just two weeks ago. So he's making that climb. Aye. Crafted, when are you getting up there? Uh, when I decide to run it again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I call you out on this every time. I feel a little bit bad. Only a little bit. Moving not on to Emerald. No, no. To be honest, I'm only saying it so that people don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Emerald, Juan Lee Ways. Go on, man, sorry. Uh, no, I was just going to say how to get people to like you. Uh, I don't. I just hate enough people that other people to find me vaguely amusing. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's how Keyzeron tolerates me now. <laughs> Tenth place in Emerald for Juan Lee Ways, as we mentioned. We also have a 19th for... His name on speedrun.com is Alan Pikachu. But I have it on good knowledge that it's actually Anal Pikachu. He's just not allowed to put that. Well, this is, that's a no-no word. That's a no-no word. Three PBs in the past week in Emerald, dropping his time by 20 minutes. So close to the sub three on his, uh, his run yesterday. So that'll be an interesting climb to watch. Not, not been very active as Emerald for a bit. Be nice to see some uh, top times creeping in. Nothing for Pokemon Dash, which is pretty standard. XD gets itself an 11th place from Seamus, Seamus Ohio? Seamus Ohio? Come again. Seamus Ohio, possibly. Yeah, I'll take it. Sounds good. I'd expect to see Ryzik in PB soon. Possibly Rufflegon as well, who's been running recently. Possibly Tootler. Tootler. Hmm. That's a good name as well, I like that one. Did, did we not mention Exarians? Uh, or was was that in the last podcast? The uh, yeah, oh yeah, he did that. He did that in time for the last one. Interesting. Did it? We did a whole thing on that. Mm -hmm. I am going to go with the call that it's an Ohio rep based on his American run. Yeah, I'll take it. I just I have no idea. Oh, may it's Sea Mist Ohio. Ah, yeah, Sea Mist. Okay, that's probably makes. See, it's difficult when there's no spaces. Shout mm -hmm. or capitalization. Come on, man. <laughs> calling you out as well. It's all it's it's just all good or whatever it was from the snap leaderboards. CJ, it's all good. Yeah, that's the one. Mystery dungeon save and quit. I think we covered this in the last podcast, but we'll just mention it again. Whom is DS gets his first place. There's a seventh for Hikari Moon as well, and then cool. single segment gets C uh, C rule. In 16, Sea Rule will appear in a few leaderboards this from the Netherlands as well. What do you call people from the Netherlands? Dutch. Thank you. I'm terrible at geography. <laughs> See, Didn't was... we already go over that? I'm bit? fairly sure. Yes. I'm terrible at remembering <laughs> stuff as well. So, yeah, oh, he also uh, picks up a Ranger and a Black. Wow, Ranger, Black, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. And then there's a multiple Pokemon games category? What is yeah. this? We're going to go for an explorer. I've never seen this before. <laughs> oh, I see. So it's like... Oh, it's multiple players. Damn. How does why this is work? That, why is that there? What? I, I don't know. I'm curious how it works as well. It's oh, apparently I see. moderated by Cruel. Catchable co-op. Co oh yeah, that makes sense. Like, because you have to do play the different games to catch them all. So they have to play Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire, Red, Leaf, Green, complete them all, and catch every Pokemon. Damn, well, that's quite fun. I'm not quite sure. Eighty-three it... hours real time. Wow. <laughs> so I think it said in the rules as well that they uh, didn't count sleeping breaks. Yeah, in-game time is excluding sleep breaks. Hey guys, we should do that. <laughs> God, we actually could as well. Are you going to fly me out to Europe to... 
No, we're just going to use Sinstar, no offense. It's much cheaper oh, to go oh, grab him. Yeah. <laughs> just get Sinstar and Garth. Yeah. We'll drag them together and bot that record. Easy peasy. <laughs> uh, that's interesting, I didn't know that was there. But yeah, uh, several shows up in a bunch of leaderboards. Uh... Just a reminder that you had that like, Sinstar answer so quickly. <laughs> Interesting as well that I said Sinstar and not Garfield. <laughs> Which is weird, because I definitely have spoken to Garfield a lot more, and it would have made a lot more sense, but for whatever reason, just said Sinstar. Yeah, Garfield doing Pokemon speedruns. The man is yeah. an Octopath Traveler speedrunner speed now. He's not the speedrun itself. Ranger gets itself a PB by c Rule, as we did mention. Interestingly enough, run on English version when everybody else runs on the Japanese ones. Uh, Diamond and Pearl, any percent? Gets itself a ninth place run by Nerd Squared. Platinum Glitchless next. So no, pretty typical that Re Battle Revolution doesn't get any runs. Actually, nothing for Explorers of Time Darkness this time. And then Ranger Two very rarely gets any new runs. Your pronunciation's just been called out, Amoeba. Pronounce K rule, not C rule. Well, he should have spelt it with a K then. We've had the capitalization discussion. I don't need to teach people how to. Well, actually, I don't think he's English, so that's probably unfair. But anyway, Platinum Glitchless, Crafted obviously picks himself up the Reki. Uh, the only other PB is Crafted himself again in round two. That's actually a 505, 506 now. 506. 506. In When's, the queue. When's sub 5? Tomorrow. I don't die. <laughs> That's a long speed run. 5 man hours. Yeah, it's, oh. it's literally first hour and a half as usual platinum, terrible early game. And then it's like 3 hours of just relaxing and fighting a bunch of trainers, being really over leveled. Everything's really <laughs> easy. And then you have to do the chain minute. <laughs> Suddenly, I'll, we'll, we'll give you some difficult stuff now. Suddenly, you have to think. <laughs> God. Uh, is that the longest speedrun you do, then? Uh, I don't think you've done anything longer, have you? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, I exited out of Platinum too early. Any percent? Go a go go. How was the run? Terrible. Don't even watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I lost Perfect. 10 minutes on the first tentacle because it took me 5 minutes to get a tweak because I was sick <laughs> Damn. I think I managed to find the tentacle bit straight away oh no wow <laughs> it's like a superpower how do I do it it's like the first it's like the route 202 tweak I think it is I just Oh, oh, yeah. oh I... you went to the wrong tentacle, thank god. Yeah, that's all right, all right. My, my, the power failed me a little bit. That's fine. Uh, Mystery Dungeon Sky gets two records. One... Oh god, the, the number of categories in this. Here we go. Any percent with Wonder Mails by Whom is DS? And then Darkrai with Wonder Mails by Mozzarella Cheese. Both big names in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon community right now. Um, I don't think we've had a month that had a podcast go by without one of them popping up with a PB somewhere. Nearly always a record. Park Gold Soul Silver gets some love, which has taken some time because I don't think it's had any for ages. It's all the love in the world this time. Fifth place by Retro Tato in Glitchless. Ninth place by Skoagogo. How was the run? Better than the platinum run, but <laughs> I, I, I PB'd by 23 minutes and didn't go up on a single place on the leaderboard. <laughs> Damn. Pulse got a PB yesterday in Soul Silver. Ooh. He's not even on the leaderboards. Unless SS means single segment. That's not at all confusing. Shoutouts to Pulse if he did get that PB. And then 11th for apparently K rule. That's the, the third one that he, he uh, pops up in. Pulse says wrong Raikou 
but still got location when it's 4 30. 4 30 26. Congrats. I like how the chat helps out for the stuff that we miss. It's very nice. <laughs> Ranger Guardian signs gets a PB. Second place Whoa. by Spur 9000. Which is slightly unfair because there's only two runners on this category. At least Diamond gets some uh, some friends in this. I know he loves the Ranger speedruns. Black and White 1 is after a month of nothing, is a busy boy. Yes! Again. Fifth place for Simply Cosmo. How was his run scour? I think he's still, he's still obviously looking to improve it, but I don't know too much about it because I didn't see it live, so... <laughs> Fair enough. Sixth for Woodland. Uh, Woodland's been a busy boy in black on and off this year. Oh, he's only got two, BB, two PBs on SRC. I'm sure he's had more than that. Unless I'm thinking of his platinum times as well. But uh, I've definitely seen him doing runs quite a bit. And then 16th for K Rule again. K Rule also being busy. Next, we skip a lot of side games and we go to the worst Mystery Dungeon game. But who is DS picks up another record here? An 817. God, that is a long speedrun. Eight hours of Mystery Dungeon. And not even good Mystery Dungeon. God damn. And it's Potato Cam. Legit. Imagine if this game didn't exist. That's harsh. The series no. would be a lot better. <laughs> no PPs in Black White 2 or XY. Then they've only had one or so active runner at a time for a long time, so that's not that surprising. Oras gets an any percent run in 18th for Boxmeister. Yesterday. I can't hover over it to see his comments. Come on. Here we got it. Big improvements starting to look like something decent. Could be big things to come from Boxmeister. I like the name as well. Yeah, steady improvements. Wow, all across this month actually. Though in 15 days, gone from a 441 to a 332. Good. And then obviously the Elite Four round two times. First, second, and third for Wartab and Rain Etiquette. The big pushers for this category. And with that, that is the end of it. We don't get any Gen 7 PBs this month. We don't get a Detective Pikachu PB this month. Missing your second any... What? Really? I seriously missed it. Oh god, wow. When did that get verified? Did I just miss that? I got verified now. Oh, I'm sorry, Water. I'm absolutely trash. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't notice this at all. So Water got second place in Auras. Congratulations, Water. <laughs> oh, it got okay. It got verified yesterday. I, I have an excuse. So that's fine. I did this list on Tuesday. You didn't get verified yesterday. You full of shit. So it's like I got verified yeah, seven days ago. All right. I feel embarrassed now. How was the no run, Water? Oh, was it? Did you turn it into a round two run as well? I did. Is that what's going on? That would be. That was right. Oh yeah, it's the same video. It says any per three oh nine e round two. Yeah. In that video header. Boys, the three oh nine. I can't remember what the. The best time is something like a three oh four, because IMAX does not submit to the leaderboards. Still sub 310, only the fourth person to do it. Although I think you already had sub 310, so I don't know why I'm saying that. I could be wrong. I don't know. Who knows? Congrats. And with that, that is the end of the leaderboard roundup and this month's Pokemon Speedruns podcast. Unless anybody else has anything interesting to let us know. Oh, good. Thank you very much, Crafted, Skoa, and Ty Kevin. Always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. And we shall see everybody, hopefully next month, 
the next episode of the Pokemon Speedrun Podcast. Yep. Yeah. See you guys after GDQX. Oh, tune into GDQX, yes. Uh, is that the only event? I don't know if anybody else is doing any other event. I don't know either. That would be a good question. Yeah. It's a quiet time for events. So yes, definitely check out GDQX. And we will definitely scrutinize those runs next month. <laughs> no pressure. See you later, guys. Catch you later.